Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now in another example of unintended consequences that their own sanctions have once again inflicted on those who <coughs> uh, imposed them has become apparent. Now it's a fish and crab crisis that's broken out in the USA. Plus the traditional British takeaway meal of fish and chips have increased in price so significantly in the UK that restaurants that specialise in fish and chips are closing in droves due to high costs of not just the fish but energy and cooking oil. Germany is anticipating a serious deficit of its favourite fish pollock. Now all of this is causing a growing level of frustration with all these anti-Russian bans so seriously affecting their people in the West. So let's look at the fish and carp crisis in uh, the US. In March 2022, the United States imposed sanctions on all types of fish being imported into uh, the US from Russia. That included salmon, cod, crab, pollock. Subsequently, the ban was extended to include processed products from any country that has Russian fish as an ingredient in it. Now, analysts warned at the time that this would have a very negative effect on the market in the US and in, even in Europe. I mean, the Russian Association of Fishery uh, Companies has highlighted this, this significant deficit in the US about crab supply. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for uh, watching, which I do greatly appreciate. Now, the consequences of the US's government decision will be borne by American consumers, not Russian fishermen, emphasised German Zeverev, who is president of the Russian Association of Fishery Enterprises and Exporters. He says the Russian fishermen and fish merchants have no difficulty in selling their produce to other countries as the demand for seafood and fish products currently outstrips the amount of supply that Russia can provide. I mean, Russia, along with Canada, was the significant contributor to the United States crab supply. I mean, imports for the first three quarters of 2021 increased by 28% to reach a total of $766 million. That was reported by Bloomberg. So it's, they're now saying they've got a serious crab crisis. Now, the next fish in line is cod. Zimbabwe recalled over the past 10 years the catch of the U.S. Uh, fish has halved, so it began importing from Russia. Now this is basically because the waters of the Atlantic seaboard on the eastern coast of uh, Canada and the US has been overfished for years. There's now insufficient stocks of cod to be caught. However, given that they're no longer they've got the Russian source and that's unavailable, the consequences are now being swiftly met. I mean, the American whitier seafood, which specialises in Atlantic fisheries, is close to bankruptcy. One of its subsidiaries, Marine Fishing International, which supplied crabs caught in Russian waters, uh, now has no product available to sell and it's got no other alternative suppliers. Now, Ilya Shestakov, who's head of the Russian Federal Agency for Fisheries, announced that there's no issues at all with the export of fish products from Russia. In fact, deliveries to China have increased by over a third in the past year. I mean, so China, as you know, is one of Russia's significant trading partners, uh, particularly now in foodstuffs. And they take about 50% of Russia's uh, total exports, which is about 1.3 million tonnes, with a value of $3 billion. He says it will continue to buy as much of the seafood as they can supply. Additionally, products like Russian boiled and frozen crab is gaining a foothold in the Chinese market. I mean, recently there was a major crab festival held in Shanghai and new trade opportunities are being opened in various Chinese provinces. So it's expected that exports of Russian seafood will continue to grow in China. Now, Japan, which is a G7 member and still under military occupation since World War II by the US, has imposed some sanctions on Russia at the behest of the US, but they're half-hearted and they don't affect their energy sector or their imports of Russian seafood. 
I mean, Russia is one of the largest customers uh, of Japan. Uh, Japan is one of the largest customers of China, of Russia after China in seafood. And it imports around $1.3 billion worth. And that was in 2023 and it's still continuing today. Now the sanctions are also affecting Europe. Now, Russia is one of the world's leading suppliers and sup producers of cod and significantly supplies to the EU market. Or, I mean, the reduction in catches due to overfishing in the traditional fishing grounds of the North Sea and the tra <coughs> introduction of trade restrictions have resulted in a shortage of fish, with processors expressing concern about the situation. Now, the European Council has excluded Russian fish from the tariff rate quota system for the 24 to 26 period. No duties were put in place, however, there is a current rate of 13.7% on fish imports. Now, additionally, a 35% tariff was applied by the UK, which affected in 2022. As a consequence, a staple food in the UK, which is fish and chips, has been significantly more expensive. I mean, you used to be able to get cod and chips for around £6.50, and now you're lucky if you can get it for at least double that. You know, plus you get a smaller bit of fish and a smaller portion of chips. I mean, what they fail to understand that putting tariffs on Russian fish import doesn't hurt Russian fish suppliers, but the British consumer. But of course, British politicians do not think about their citizens and the effects of the higher fish, cooking oil and energy prices for the British consumer. They are more interested in virtue signaling how righteous they are in throwing money at the Ukraine and showing their US masters what good and well-behaved obedient vassals they are. Now, British experts have stated that climate change, falling crop yields and military action in Ukraine are the underlying causes of these high prices. Who are they kidding? The fact is, it's the result of the anti-Russian bans on cheap energy, affordable fish and cooking oil, not to mention the cheap fertiliser for growing the potatoes. Now, two years ago, the EU introduced a ban on the import of Russian uh, shellfish and caviar. Additionally, the Baltic states and Sweden were advocating for a prohibition on cod, sprats, herring and other fish. Of course, the usual consumers in the UK are the ones who that suffer, and not Russians who have set up plenty of customers for their own high quality seafood. I mean, Eurostat shows that in 2022, Russian pollock accounted for 27% or 230 million euros of the US market, and that was up from 166 million euros in 2021. In terms of weight, deliveries reached 84.2 thousand tonnes in 2023, which is up from 80 thousand tonnes in 2022, and 57 thousand tonnes in 2021. In total, the European Union employed Pollock with a total value of over 1 billion euros, and of that, 266 million euros was Russian. So in the event of a ban, they're going to lose more than a quarter of their supply. Now, Pollock is a highly sought after product. I mean, in Germany, Pollock accounts for 19% of fish consumption. I mean, local media outlets are already preparing the German public for these unfavourable developments. I mean, should Pollock be subject to sanctions in September, a significant and sudden increase in prices is going to be expected. I mean, the German market will be deprived of its most popular product. They sell at almost 5.2 million fish sticks, or what they call in the UK fish fingers, are consumed daily. Now, this significant challenge is imminent, largely due to developments in Russia, according to the report from Bill. The threat of the significant price increases is imminent. The German market is totally reliant on imports from Russia. And pollock and cod are essential to the German fishing operations. Approximately 1,000 employees in the fishing and processing industry in Germany will be laid off. And that's according to uh, Stefan Meyer, the managing director of the Federation of the German Fish and Wholesale Industry Trade. In the meantime, Moscow's concentrated its efforts on its key export destinations for its fish and processed food products. In addition to China, these include the Republic of Korea, Japan, Vietnam, Thailand, as well as Africa and Latin America. So, fish wars, cod wars, fish wars, crab wars, 
they're all happening and Russia's the winner and the EU, the G7 are the losers. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the uh, thanks button at the bottom of the screen. And don't forget to um, like, subscribe and use the comments button. Thank you.